Welcome to this module on probability. Probability is the essence of statistics. Every statistical method that we have relies on a probabilistic measure. In probability, we have something called experimentation. Now, an experiment is defined as a scientific procedure undertaken to make a discovery, test a hypothesis, or demonstrate a known fact. Many of you will be aware of an experiment such as a laboratory experiment in which we take one drug and compare it to another drug. In business, we might actually use a behavioral lab to test customers' reactions towards certain advertisements. And these experiments are conducted every day in business, even though they might not use that term. When marketing departments test to see whether certain, company, certain people like a certain product over another, that is a form of experiment. In finance, we might actually use experiments to see what would happen if an investment is made in one portfolio or another. In statistics, experiments are called trials or actions where data is collected for analysis. Now, some simple experimental examples include 100 coin flips. We could experiment to see whether or not we have a fair coin. We should get close to a 50-50 split between heads and tails. Another experimental trial would be a random selection of cards from a deck to see what is the probability of getting a particular card or a particular suit. Another one would be counting the number of people entering one door or another, such as one testing to see whether students use the front side or side door of the business school. Simple experiments have a few key characteristics. Number one is they have to have a clearly defined outcome. And this means that the outcome of any result trial is defined and unambiguous. For example, heads or tails in a coin flip. There really is no other option. Some might joke around that the side of the coin is an option, but we're not interested in that. The single outcome per trial means that on each trial, one and only one outcome will occur. In this case, for a coin flip, either heads or tails will occur, not both. And in other cases, we have a random outcome. The outcome on each trial must be due to some randomness. That is, that it only occurs by chance. There wasn't some other factor that was at play in the experimental trial. The characteristics are the essence of random experiments. And this is what we're focused on. Every outcome has what was called a sample space. Now, consider all the possible outcomes for a coin flip. The only possible outcomes are heads and tails. These two outcomes then become known as the sample space of the experiment. It is the entire set of outcomes for that experiment. In order to show sample space, we use something called set notation. And set notation shows all the possible outcomes by using these curly braces, this curly left brace and curly right brace. Thus, the sample space for the coin flip, denoted by this capital letter S, equals brace H comma t, meaning that the sample space for this experiment is only a heads or a tails. If a coin is flipped 10 times, then there are 10 outcomes. The entire set of outcomes is called the experiment outcomes or sample points. Below shows a number of combinations of two possible sets of outcomes. In sample one, we have h t h h h t h t h t. If we did another 10, it would be t t h t h h t h h t. These are two different sets of outcomes denoted by their appropriate sample space. Let's take a look at marketing. In business, we can have a simple example of purchasing a product in a red box or a green box. The results of the 10 purchases could be red, red, green, red, green, green, red, 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 green. In this example, 60% of the people, or six out of 10, purchased the item in the red box over the green box. Knowing this could help a marketing department choose its packaging for better sales. A simple test like this in marketing is actually known as an A-B experiment when we statistically identify the factors associated with, yes, a red box did better than a green box. And we might do something a little bit more advanced to determine, was it simply the color of the box that made the customer choose that, or was there something else at play? These A-B experiments can get very complicated and are beyond the scope of this course. When assessing a series of events, it's helpful to create a probability tree diagram to see the possible outcomes. Consider a sample coin flip where we have heads and tails. We can create a simple branch tree 
with two branches. Down below, we have the example. Green dots are going to be the tails. Red dots are going to be the heads. But we call these nodes of the tree. And we can show here for a coin flip that there are two terminal nodes, one green and one red. Each has a probability of one half, or 0.5, of occurring. If we were to flip a second coin, two outcomes are possible for each of the outcomes in the first coin toss. Below, we've expanded the tree to show what this looks like. For the top part of the tree, where we have the green node on the first coin flip, we have two possible options, a green and a red. In the top one, the double green would show heads heads. The second one shows a heads and a tails, denoted by the green and then the red. In the bottom tree, we have a red node for the first coin flip as a tail, and then a green node, and then another coin flip where we have two tails, denoted by red red. Thus, we have four possible outcomes listed, and each combination has a one quarter chance of occurring. All of these are known as combined events, and the trees help us visualize this a lot better.